Hello, welcome. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. <laughs> um, what a wonderful day to celebrate. You know, I've been thinking this week about how fun would it be to be the angel who was in the tomb when the tomb was empty and Mary, Mary and Salome were on their way into the tomb. Uh, can you imagine how fun that would be uh, to be sat where Jesus' body was and you hear them chatting outside and they come in, you hear their footsteps down the stairs and you're getting ready to say, uh, well the first thing you need to say is don't be alarmed because of course you're terrifyingly bright and dazzling. Uh, and then you say, you're looking for Jesus, aren't you? Yes. And then you drop the line of eternity, which is, he has risen, he is not here. Should we say that together? He has risen, he is not here. Wow. Imagining delivering that news, that death has been defeated, that Jesus has come back to life, that there is real and true hope in the world once again. Amazing, amazing. Um, well, a big warm welcome. We're going to stay all together for our service today, all ages. There is a crash down here. If you'd like to make use of that, do feel free to go over there. Um, our, the Scorer family are here. Thank you. We'll be doing our prayers and reading. And after the service today, please do stay if you'd like to take Holy Communion. Um, our first song is Jesus, Prince and Saviour, which tells us that we uh, can be friends with Jesus. Jesus can be a friend of sinners. Isn't that amazing? I'll pray for us and then we'll sing our first song together. Dear Father, we thank you so much that Jesus is risen. Please would you make that wonderful news real for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand and we will sing.
Well, our first reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 16, and it can be found on page 1023 of the Church Bibles, which are at the end of your pew. So please do turn to page 1023 if you'd like to read along. Read from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. Mark 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow, what a moment. We are going to try and recreate a little bit of that story now, but I need some volunteers. Any, anyone called Salome here? Any Marys? Marys? Yes, your hand was up. Do you want to come and help me? Uh, I'd love some people of all sizes. Uh, Ian, well volunteered. <laughs> yes! Um, come up two. One. Yes. Uh, maybe one more. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Um, right, we've got three Marys and a Salome here. Well done. Um, we just excuse us for a moment. We are just going to collect the spices that they needed to take to the tomb. Um, so, guys, if you would come with me, we're going to head over. Uh, if you could just head down to there, I'll show you what we're doing in a minute. Right, we've got some spices here. It looks like coffee, but it's not. Um, there's one for you. Um, oh, sorry, and I've run that's out. Fine, no, that's there's good. one for you. Right, we're, we are going. Imagine that we're walking to the tomb. We're expecting to find a body there, that it's very sad. We're mourning. Um, who knows what will happen when we get there? Okay, let's go, let's go. Here we go, we're coming to the tomb, we're walking down the steps, we're not quite sure what to expect, we're a bit sad, Jesus has died, we're going to put our spices on the table here. Whoa, were you surprised? Yeah, yeah. This were, they, these people were the angel. Great guys, thank you so much for helping, you can go and sit back down again. Good job. I went slightly better than I was expecting, actually. Um, well done. Now, the wonderful news of the Lord Jesus being risen is that it proves that what he achieved on the cross was true, that it really, he really has paid the price for people's sins. And that means that we can confess our sins with confidence knowing that they can be forgiven. And that is what we're going to do now as a church family. So the words will be on the screen for us. Let's say these words together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Listen to these wonderful words from Romans 8. It says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Well, amen to that. Um, hands up, anyone know what head scratching means? Well, how, do, how is someone feeling when they're head scratching? What do you think? They're thinking, yeah? What do you think? Maybe they've got nits, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, what do you think? They're confused. Let's go with confused, yeah. They're confused. If Jesus' body is not there, and he's, you've watched him die, and he's saying he's risen, you'd be a bit confused, wouldn't you? Um, we're going to watch uh, a video now of how people were, were head-scratching at that time. Two people moving and marching, thinking, head-scratching about something big that's just been happening. But on the road to Emmaus from Jerusalem Way, two became three as another says, Hey, hey, says he, you've been thinking and head scratching. Has something big just been happening? <gasps> you've not heard about what's been happening? All of Jerusalem have been head scratching. What have I missed? asks the man. I'd love to know, please tell if you can. It's about a man called Jesus and we thought he was coming to rescue God's people and send the Romans off running. He did and he said loads of cool stuff from a place up north called Nazareth. He told great stories and healed the sick. He knew people by name and what made them tick. Oh, remember that wedding? He turned water to wine, brought his friend back to life and his friend felt just fine. He was sharing and caring, just ask his friend Pete. He walked on the water with only his feet. He said shush to the storm and the storm was hushed. He did a miracle with bread and thousands were stuffed. Besides all this, his sermon up a hill had so many stories, super cool and brill. I can't believe it, what a big loss. A man so great who hung on a cross and on that cross, that's where he died. I feel so tied up in knots inside. And three days have passed, though it feels more like 70, because now we've heard that his tomb is empty. <laughs> That's right, you heard me. His body is gone. But who'd take his body? He never did wrong. You seem confused and out of the picture. So let me show you what it says in the scripture. It was always the plan, right from the start, because Jesus loved you with all of his heart. He died on the cross, but rose from the tomb. He came back to life so you can live too. And as they were moving, and still head scratching, two of them stopped, but the third kept on marching. Uh, hey, uh, don't go, please, the two say. The sun's gone to bed, so why don't you stay? Good point, says the third. Day has turned to night. I'll stop over with you two and then grab a bite. And as they sit down to eat, they close their eyes. He thanks God for the grub, then what a surprise! The two people stare and then rub their eyes. It's Jesus, not gone, but fully alive! And before they say seconds, there's more bread going round. Jesus just vanishes. He cannot be found. The two are left thinking, I'm really head-scratching. They'd just been with Jesus. Something big was happening. We must say we've seen Jesus, so tie up your shoes. Quick, to Jerusalem, there's no time to lose. All along it was Jesus, the very same one. They were searching the scriptures with God's precious son. It's the biggest story that's ever been told about Jesus who's risen and never gets old. The two met with Jesus in the most surprising way. They shared the story and we still share it today. And then we're going to sing in Christ alone.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Easter, for sending your Son to die on a cross to save us. We are amazed that Jesus was willing to suffer in our place because of his great love. Thank you that you raised him from the dead so we can be forgiven and be friends with you. What wonderful news. We pray that as we enjoy chocolate, Easter egg hunts, food and family time, we would not forget the most important part of Easter, celebrating that Jesus is alive. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for the situation in Ukraine. We pray for all those affected by the conflict. Please keep them all safe. We think of refugees forced to leave their homes, possessions and loved ones and ask that they will be provided with all that they need. We pray for all those who lead, lead and make decisions to find a quick and peaceful end to the war. Thank you that you are in control of all the things and we ask that you would use what is happening to turn more people to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for all those in our church who went on the youth weekend away. Thank you for everyone who went, for the fun they had, for the, help, the helpers who went and joined them, and for what they heard about you. We pray for those who will soon be starting to attend the youth group for the first time in the coming weeks. We pray for all the leaders to have energy, for lots of fun, and for great times learning from your word. We pray for everyone going back to school soon, that you would help them not to worry, to be a great witness to their friends, and help them to learn well. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Annie, Tilly and Nick. Um, now, a few items for church news, and we'll finish on the best one, so keep concentrating. Um, Monday evening, the 25th of April, is our APCM. That's like our church AGM, if you're familiar with those. Um, we are in need of a church warden and PCC members. Uh, there's details of that in the notice sheet. Um, tomorrow morning at 7.20 a.m., if you tune in to BBC Radio Somerset, Jennifer's got her head and hats already, um, Jennifer Matthew will be on the radio um, explaining what she is doing with the CAP life skills. Please do tune in and listen and be praying for her as she does that. Um, the HOPE course is coming up. Um, this is a course, if you've ever wondered, uh, we live the Christian life now, don't we? Jesus died and came back to life what seems like a really long time ago. There were promises in the future about having new life and uh, living in heaven. They seem really far away. How do those two things give us hope in the present? That is what the Hope Course is all about. We'll be doing Bible studies, talks, and hearing from Christians about their experience of having hope in the present. Uh, they're running, it's running on Tuesday evenings in May. There's details in the notice sheet. Please do get in touch with me if you'd like to come. Um, and our last and most exciting notice is with Candy. And happy Easter. Um, so as uh, Diet Hankey said in that lovely Welsh accent of his, Easter really is the greatest story ever told. And so we have a free book for all of the children that are here today. I might need to define a child is under 18. I'm sorry for those of you that were really <laughs> hoping for one of these. But um, yes, it's the book of Easter and there's bits to colour. There's lots of interesting bits to look at in there. And we would like to, from the junior church team, just give you one of these because Easter's amazing and it's the best part of the Christian year. So Melissa and I will be standing at the back after the service. Do come and grab one if you would like one on your way out. Okay, thank you. I promise you it was the best one. Um, now, James is going to jump up for our sermon in a moment, but first we're going to have our second reading from Revelation 1. Thank you, Kate. So the second reading this morning is taken from Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 12 to 18, and it can be found on page 1,233 
in the church Bibles. Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 12 to 18. I turned round to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash round his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Good morning, everybody, and a very happy Easter from me as well. Uh, if you're watching at home and you don't know, my name is James. I'm the rector here. It's great to see everybody. And um, uh, I want to uh, focus you on a, a word this morning, a bad word, and it's the word fear. Now, I think a lot of people live this life with fear, day by day, moment by moment. Perhaps there are times when you kind of push it under the pillow and forget about it, but actually you kind of carry it around with you all the time. If you come to Jesus, there is no need to fear. The first words that are spoken at the empty tomb on the first Easter day are, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Jesus died for us, rose again, and we come, as we come to him and put our trust and faith in him, he says to us, do not be afraid. And yet, there's so much to fear. Uh, we've lived with fear, I think, in all sorts of ways in these last couple of years through this pandemic. We, uh, the church authorities told us to lock the doors and walk away from our church buildings. Stay at home. Work at home. School at home. Don't go out. Don't mix with people. Be afraid of this virus. There's all sorts of things we might be afraid of. The news now is, is full of war. What a terrifying thing that is for people out there in Ukraine and other places too in the world. And there's all sorts of many, many things people are afraid of. We are frail human beings. And um, we kind of walk around in life wearing fear like a shirt. I've got a blue and white shirt on today. If I walk over this way, the shirt comes with me. If I go this way, I'm still in it. Even if I run very fast, the shirt comes with me. Where I go, the shirt of fear remains buttoned tightly to my body, underneath my waistcoat, where I cannot escape from the fear of life. Now, I don't know if you noticed it in that reading we just had. There is a glorious vision of Jesus after his life, after his death, after his resurrection from the dead, and after he has gone back to heaven. Jesus in glory. And he speaks to the Apostle John, who had been his friend on earth. And through John, John writes it down so that the churches can hear it, so that we may hear it today, the words of the risen Jesus. And he says in Revelation 1 verse 17, do not be afraid. And he says, I am the first and the last. Now, one of the things people are very afraid of, I think, is the disasters of this life. Oh, I might catch COVID. I might have a car accident. Something may go horribly wrong. I might fail my exams. I am 
the first and the last, says Jesus. From the beginning to the end, everything that happens in history happens under the lordship of the risen Jesus. We don't need to worry. He's the one in charge. And the fear of the disasters of this life does not need to grip us. So look, I'm going to undo a button on the shirt of fear. And it begins to feel a little easier. But some people fear big decisions in life. Oh, am I going to get married? Who am I going to marry? Where am I going to live? What job should I do? What choices at school should I make? The big decisions of life. When am I going to retire? Where am I going to retire? Should I retire? Can I retire? Where? What should I? How can I help my children, my elderly relatives? The decisions of life can be crippling, and people are afraid of having to make a big decision. But Jesus says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. He says, I'm the one who has life inside me, the power of life to be lived with God. I have that life, and if you come to me, I give it to you. It was Jesus' great command during his life, come to me and have life. And that's the only decision that really matters in your life. Come to Jesus and have life. I am the living one, he says. The other decisions don't matter. God doesn't mind if you're a road sweeper or a doctor or a chemist or an engineer. But he does mind about whether you come to Jesus and have life. He is the living one. And then, of course, the next fear is perhaps the biggest one of all. People are afraid of death. Because we will all die. We know it, don't we? We get ill, and in the end, we will all die. Death comes. But you know what Jesus says? Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. Wow. Think about that. I was dead. Now, I don't know if you've been thinking about Jesus in these last three days, maybe reading the Bible and praying a bit, because it's Easter time. On Good Friday, two days ago, we thought about Jesus dying on the cross for us, for our sins. And yesterday, as I was praying, I was thinking of Jesus lying in a tomb. And the the word I thought about was dead. Jesus says, I was dead, dead and cold, not moving in the tomb. But today is Easter day, and we can think about the word was. I was dead, says Jesus. Now, that's an amazing thing. I was dead. Jesus died and rose again. He has broken the power of death. He has conquered it bashed it down, smashed it and broken it. We do not need to fear death. We can undo the button for decisions, and we can undo a button up here even for the fear of death. And fear begins to lose its grip. We do not need to fear even death. But next, next, maybe you are afraid of being left alone, friendless, with no one who loves you. Many people have that fear. Life is difficult. And even when you've got friends, there are times when we feel lonely. We have to live our lives as who we are, and it's hard. But do you know, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you come to Jesus and receive his life, He says to you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I love you. My love is with you forever and ever. And Jesus, the risen Jesus, says to us, do not be afraid. 
I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. He will never leave you, never abandon you. You need never feel deserted and abandoned and forsaken. Now, on the cross as Jesus died, he called out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus on the cross bore the weight of our sins, and they separated him and cut him off from God the Father so that you and I need never be cut off, never abandoned, never deserted. If you fear desertion, Jesus will never desert you. And I can undo another button on the shirt of fear. But the biggest fear of all, the biggest fear of all is number five, because even after death, many people are afraid of what comes next. And you know it's right to be afraid of that. If you do not know Jesus, who is Lord of life and death and eternity, it's right to be afraid of what comes after death. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing Jesus Christ and following him. And you know what Jesus says? He says, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead. And now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. That means that Jesus is the one who, on whom our eternal destiny depends. What happens to you after you have died? Jesus holds the key. So you don't need to be afraid. Do not be afraid, he says. And I can undo uh, yet another button somewhere here on the shirt of fear. Isn't that truly amazing? What wonderful words from the risen Jesus to us, to me, to you today, to you looking at us through a screen as well. Jesus says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead. Now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. And what does that mean for the shirt of fear? What does that mean for the shirt of fear? Under the waistcoat, down the sleeves, here it is, the shirt of fear. And come right away, like that, and there it is. That is the shirt of fear. We can take it off, we can scrunch it up, we can throw it down. Do not live with fear. Do not wear it. Do not carry it. Do not live in fear. Come to Jesus and cast that fear away. Hear the words that he says to you Easter day. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Let those words sink in. Carry them with you through the day, through the week, through your life. Jesus says, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. Now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Lord Jesus, we give you praise and thanks today for your great risen power, for your glory, your strength, your forgiveness and your love. We praise you that you call us to put fear away. You have broken the power of all the things that scare us. And we marvel at your love and your power today. Amen.
Our final hymn today is Thine Be the Glory. Please stand and we'll sing. Please do sit down. Well, if you'd like to stay for communion, you are very welcome. We're going to take about 10 minutes to set up, and, and then we'll do that later. But now, um, let me pray for us as we close. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look. I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Dear Heavenly Father, today of all days, we rejoice in our Lord Jesus. We rejoice in who he is and what he has done. And we pray as your people that we would not live in fear, that we would live trusting in him, that he is good and reigns over all things, even death, even our eternal destination. We pray as we go out today that you would be with us, that we would know Jesus, that we would know his risen power in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>